y'all know the vibes it is smooth lot of time we're back on the video today you guys we're back on them bangers and we got some changes for the c7z coming up so let me go ahead and start the car or oh, cold start because we haven't drove it in like dang since last week so we're gonna have cold start the car do what we gotta do get about it here and i'm gonna let you guys know what we got going on for today Uh, so we're on the way to my guy a boo shop as always you know we live there that's our third home it's our home the gas station and the boo shop but we have a couple things that are put on the car we are swapping out the wheels to the 18s dang that is still water just fell over we are swapping out the wheels to the 18s and we're gonna have some new tires on there i'm surprised you guys when we get there what tires are on the car but they're a lot stickier and they're not a street tire they're radio yeah and also we got some distilled water here uh i'll let you guys know what that's for i'll give y'all a hint bleeding the system because we probably do have air in it and the car hasn't been has not been performing at its best so all all the stuff you've seen is with air in the system so it is lot it, i'm tripping i'm sorry so all the stuff you've seen so far is with air in the system so with all that being said having air in the system the car was getting to a certain temperature which would pull timing so the car with the air pocket being gone will be faster and that is a promise because uh, after doing a data log and talking to my tuner and seeing the temperature that it pulls timing yes we were at that temp at the start of our runs so imagine how much time was being pulled at the top of our runs because mats were at like 160 which is odd for having a ice tank and heat exchanger and all that stuff on my c7 so Yes, we're gonna address that situation when we get there. We are here, buddy. Like I said, we do have a new set of tires on the car too. These are going in the trash. These are DR2s. These didn't even have much life on them anyways. Let me see if I can find the wear line. Right here. Type shit. Okay. Type shit. Alright y'all. We are close to getting to work done. Like I said, we're going to get the blower blood which will get all the air out the bricks and we're also putting new wheels and tires on the car i'm gonna just show you guys the wheels and tires now before we install them we do have another set of uh, bc forge like these the same wheel but in the 18 so a smaller but a big bigger tire in the back and it's a lighter wheel and it's gonna be a lighter tire because these are big ass 355s but i'll show y'all more of that when we get the car inside of the garage new tires and can you see me i ain't that dark show you guys the new wheel and tires that's going on here so we do have same set of BC4s, like I said, in the 18, but they're on some Mickey Thompson ET Street R's, and they are, let's show you the size, 325, 35, 18. So, it's not as wide of a tire as it is, as the Kumho's are 355s, but it's also a better compound, taller sidewall, and a lighter tire. So, performance, in the performance aspect, come on now, you, you can't get no better than that.
Bruh. I don't think your knee's supposed to bend like that, bro. It might be hyperextended. Oh, this is our latest Kentucky Derby. Nah, I ain't gonna do that. I ain't gonna do that. I'm part of the Demolition Derby. Demolition Derby. <laughs> is your car outside? Yeah, it's right outside. Let me show you guys what type of uh, <laughs> demolition <laughs> she's made. Ooh, look at this. Damn. Big demolition. She flipped in the car though, like she rolled in the car on the highway. And she, that was today and she's walking fine, so hey man. God is good, but dang. She made the forerunner look bow legged now. <laughs> and she says she hopped out the windshield too. Tough though, good thing she's safe. But hey man. Like I said, we got a front runner for the uh, demolition derby in there. <laughs> Don't be scared when you see her. Done World peace. Now nah, stop playing. No, come here. Axel, come here. Hey, we're not in a relation. Now let me stop. I mean, <laughs> like, <laughs> let me get. Zero weights on them. Yeah, exactly. They never got balanced. Mm -hmm. No more fat ass, heavy ass tires. You said these are like 47 pounds a piece, just the tires by itself. Put these fat boys in there. Ugly ass, stupid ass, skinny ass, fat ass. <laughs> hey, what you know the fuck is wrong with you? You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, what is wrong with you, bro? Stupid ass, fucking ass. How did you hit the other car? That's that Dallas shit, bro. I don't know how he thinks of stuff on the spot so quick. He was already, he was already baking, he was already prominent in his head. He was just waiting to say it. Type shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Face that, ugly ass, stick him up. Shit, we got some stickums on there now, though. Second gear pulls now? Is that what it sound like? I can stab it instead of having to roll into it? I put them at 25, 26, so okay. you might want to air down when you do the pull. Okay. Uh. If, you, if it doesn't rub, you can put a bigger tire next time. Bigger tire wall, yeah. yeah. I mean, those, those are but okay. But that's still a 325. It's pretty wide. Mm. What, the guys were up in? Hmm? The back? Nah, I just put a different set. Makes oh. too much power for those. So, so fuck the bleeding. Mom, I'm cussing. Forget the bleeding stuff. We found the issue, bro. The pump was upside down. So we took the pump out, cleaned everything. I didn't even record because we were so deep into what's going on. But the pump was upside down, so it wasn't flowing water. It was just uh, like sucking it slowly, but just going in like really slow. So fuck the bleeding situation. The pump was not working. You motherfuckers ain't do nothing but disrespect my C7Z this whole time. I still don't got a name for the fucking car. I took Sapphire away once you said it sounded like a stripper. Properly and then put... <laughs> you can't secure the pump the way it's supposed to sit. That's what I'm trying to do right now. Goofy ass, stupid ass. I hope the camera can hear that shit. <laughs> That's what working on your car does to me. Fuck yeah, like stupid ass. Because I'm your mommy. I'm your mommy at the beach. Water. I think I got a video of the pump going before, so I'm going to insert that right now. And then I'm going to show you guys the pump flowing after with it being fixed. Hear it now. Put the flow. Yeah. There's a lot more. Damn. Oh. Some bubbles. Go 
going out. But after you flipped it around, positioning it better is actually flowing a lot better like y'all seen before. Hopefully my MATs are lower. My IATs were never the problem, but my MATs were high. Hopefully that was because the pumps wasn't flowing, which I think that is related to the manifold temps because IATs is, I mean, has a heat exchanger and all that stuff. So hopefully everything is low. I'm gonna data log the car also just to make sure. And, that, and if that's not it, who knows? Listen. No naders in sight. So we good, buddy. But if so, we gonna, worst case scenario, we gonna hop in this thing and get ghosts, bro. Worst case scenario. So we are gonna have to take a trip to Menards because we did start taking my bricks out. You see, we got that brick out over there. And then, and got that brick out. And it's a process of getting it out through. It's so weird compared to all the other ones. The brick screws are in the front of the supercharger. So you gotta take all that out and take them out. I'll show you guys when I come back. But we need to get some brake cleaner and we also need another uh, wrench of some sort that's bigger and adjustable. And also get some other stuff to make sure we can thoroughly clean these bricks out. So yeah, let's get to that. All right, so we're in here for a wrench, a bigger, a better adjustable, some brake cleaner, a clear bucket to see all the dirt and gunk come out my intercooler bricks and that should be all on my list we'll see what else i see out here for you got a full set of these right here just to give them a second bucket finally we got both bricks out they are right here and they are disgusting this was the driver's side this was the passenger side don't know why this one has this here and this one has like rtv they put on here i don't know why they Whoever did that, why they did that. Maybe it was leaking, who knows. But the back, the back is, whoo. Really no signs of leakage though, no burnt orange marks. So we're just gonna probably clean these. Same thing here. Just like oil and grime build up. So yeah. Hey guys, so far, look at all that gunk in there, man. That's why I got the bucket to show what's coming out of these bricks. So they had to have been clogged. Cause look at that, that is so nasty. You still gotta do the back end of this one too. This is the pool of gunk and shit that came out of my intercooler bricks. So yeah, they were clogged up. That is disgusting. You can't even see through that, bro. That is so nasty. And we have them right here. Gonna let them sit out for like an hour or two, let them dry. Brake cleaner, I know evaporates quick, so it's not, not really a worry, but we're still gonna let them dry. Give us some time to get everything up out of here. Cause if you tilt them over, still look up, Never mind. That was quick. What about this one? Dang, nothing came out. We're still gonna let them sit for like an hour or two. They look brand new, damn near, compared to what they like before. And I remember the bottom of these. <laughs> so, yeah. Definitely a big difference just from spraying brake cleaner. A whole bunch of brake cleaner at that. We went through a s small can, a bigger can, a bigger can, and almost another but bigger can. Just to get this like this and to have all that gunk there so see you guys on the reinstall i'm going to pour this dance nasty water out somewhere not water brake cleaner see you guys on the reinstall hopefully everything goes right and this fixes our mat situation fingers crossed disgusting bro. 
So we are about to install the bricks back where they're supposed to go. Hopefully this fixes our situation, it should. Shouldn't take time to put these things back together, but you never know how car stuff goes, so let's get them put in real quick. Boom, we got everything back together, everything's cool. So first things first, we are gonna do a run of the coolant, so we're just gonna start the pump, let it flow through the, the system, just make sure we don't have any leaks. And then we should start the bleeding procedure, which we're just gonna fill the rear tank up to almost to the top, two inches from the top, and just let it run for like 10 minutes. So let's do that now. Hopefully we don't have any leaks. Fingers crossed. All that work. All right, let's turn this pump on. All right, let's make sure we got a flow and no leaks. You're pushing through. It's gonna fill up. No leak on this end. No leaks on this end. But you can hear it filling up. So let's go to the trunk and pop the trunk open to see what that looks like. It was just pushing through till you can hear it. Sure, it got through. I can hear it now. We did get a tornado, a really, really bad one. That we actually got two. It was one, it was one that touched down in a city like 25 minutes away from me, which was very bad. It ran over a lot of homes, and then we also got one that touched down at the airport, which is like eight minutes away from me, like on the airport on the runway around that area. But luckily, it skipped over us. Thank, thank you my lord and savior man he keep us protected for sure but we do have a sunny day all the rain that was down kind of is drying up this is only from my tank i'm draining my trunk tank so we can log and see if me cleaning the bricks is going to fix the issue so hopefully it does fingers crossed like i said again fingers crossed after we bleed most of the not bleed after we like purge most of the water out purge I don't think that's the word, but most of it out down back from the bleeding process, which you had to fill it up too, which is from the top. And I did that and now we're just bleeding it down. I am going to throw some more water water in here so we can keep that uh, mix a little bit higher doing fucking six gallons of distilled water in one thing, one tube of it. So I'm going to put some more in there, get on the road, uh, log way HP tuner, see if anything is fixed, if the temps are lower. I think All right, guys, you have to come to the gas station. This car is always out of gas, man. Build motor issues, I guess. But we're gonna get the mixture of D50 again, drive around, let let the let the fuel circulate, make sure we got the right mixture. Then we're gonna do a couple hits, see if IATs and MATs go down. Cause all we've been doing now is stop and go, but we haven't went over 160 yet and stop and go. But it's a little cool out here, so I don't know if that's tricking me or not, but let's see if me cleaning these bricks actually works. So let's see. So see how, how medical tents are at 184 cause I've been sitting here with the engine off. Me and close, let's start the car. What's up? Thank you. Nah, not yet. <laughs> let's see if them temps just go down. That should help. Right, guys so we're back from logging it's somewhat better i'm gonna show you guys the logs in a little bit but i mean it didn't really get the lowest of as ever been it's like ice in there but then the ice melted so i mean temps do get cooler way quicker i'm gonna compare the logs and everything so i mean cleaning the bricks did fix uh most of the situation but i mean it's not getting as low as i want it to be so maybe 
it just the upper and lower pulley on the magnets and it's just the heat is going but i mean it's nothing too crazy like it dips below 160 after i start driving the problem was it wouldn't do that before but now i was doing it so that's fixed it gets like the 150 low 150s so and on the hit it stays there and then after it go back up so that's good but i'm gonna show you guys the logs right now so we are now pulling up the log right after i clean the bricks out and let's just look at manifold temps because that's the really only thing that's important here 159 159 driving driving 158 162, 161, it'll usually go down, so I got to a stoplight, and that's where like the th everything closes, the throttle light closes, and I'm not driving, so it'll raise and temp, 160, now we back, got back down to the 150, one, high 150s, 160, I don't think I did a pull in this one, did I? And that was probably a little baby pull right there, and after that it went up to 160, and then we stayed there even at low speeds got down to 157 let's see oh we got down to 156. it's never done that before you guys Just let y'all know driving around 156 then we got to a stoplight as you can see speed got, got down to <laughs> zero miles per hour it went up four degrees five degrees Kept driving and it made his way back down to like, oh no, nah, I still in 160. Oh, there's another stop. So I stopped again. Hasn't hit 170 at all. 165 here at, at another stoplight. So the stop and go traffic 165 is normal. It's only gonna pull timing if I'm. You know, we don't need like timing right now because we're not doing hits, so we're fine right now. And start driving. Temps start to. Nah, I stayed around 165, 160, I started driving again, yeah, low 160s. So, that's kind of an improvement than before, because stop and go, we used to get to 170, we got up to 180 one time on stop and go. Now let's go to the ice down one, and this is where you're going to see a difference. So, I purposely started, where is it at? After the car was sitting for a long time, 171, it was 70 degrees. This was today, 70 degrees today. And look, look where we got. We turned the car on, this is idle. We're not even moving. Immediately it started going down. So then we started driving. Does it look zero speed? We're already down to 156. 154. 150. 140. Five. 144, 141, 139. 130 is the lowest I've ever seen at, um, as a man of full temp. And we start driving, came to another stop, 146, 149. Start driving again, 146, 144, 143. I think I did a hit here, a little small pull. Yep, yep, yep. I went from, I did a, f a little 60 to... I hunted, it got it got up to 143, and after cruising with it, when they thought about it closed, 140, it got up to 154, and started driving, and it got right back down to the 140s, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, 148, 149. So this is over a 10 degree difference with putting ice in the tank and icing it down, and we're just driving, cruising, 150s, 150s. I think after a while, you can tell when I started to melt because we got up to 161 at a stoplight. But then we started driving 156. Same thing, stop and go traffic. We got down to the low 150s again. This is what ice in the tank. Then we got to 160 at another stoplight. Mid 160s. Now we're just dr drowning in heat because it's stoplight after stoplight after stoplight. I wasn't getting no green lights. We got up to 170. This is me. I sitting for a while. Driving with low speeds in my in my uh, you can see the speeds. This is at the end in my uh, neighborhood. Didn't touch 170. Back then, to my driveway. And yeah, that's after driving. So in this log, I was driving for a good like 20 minutes, like all together. 
until it kind of started getting hot again, which I didn't need it. Like it was only got hot at a standstill, which is normal. They say between 145 and 165 is kind of normal for MATs for supercharged cars or 140 to 165, whatever. Stop and go traffic really doesn't count as long as it's not that high during my watt pools, we're good. So big difference. I just needed to I just needed to learn how to use my ice tank the best way. And I figured it out with a bunch of my C7 and Z06 friends. Yeah, seen better IATs, so IATs and MATs. IATs really don't count with uh, LT4 vehicles because the manifold temps is really what is going to pull time and with advanced, with, with spark advance and all that stuff. So, yeah.